Well, it's that time of year again, and rather than going to a haunted house or watching a horror movie, I decided to pick up my Splice Orange GameCube controller and play the closest thing I have to a horror game, Scooby-Doo Unmasked. I don't really have much else to say, so let's get going. When you boot up the game, you're first greeted by a remade version of the Scooby-Doo theme song, so that's nice. After creating a save file, the story begins with Scooby and the gang going to visit Fred's cousin Jed, who works at a special effects studio called Monsters Fright and Magic. When they arrive, Jed is missing, and it's revealed he was framed for stealing from the establishment, and all the animatronic monsters have been reprogrammed to attack people. So the gang has to stop the monsters, find Jed, and prove his innocence. The plot itself is pretty solid. It isn't a very story-driven game, and the setup is perfect. Here's the situation, go solve the mystery. The cutscenes themselves look really good, the voice actors for the whole gang are here and do an excellent job, and the writing is admittedly funny at times, with the occasional reference to the show, which is great. When it comes to gameplay, there's only one playable character, Scooby-Doo. In his normal form, he has a spin attack, a more powerful slide attack, a rolling attack, and a belly slam. As you progress, you're introduced to different costumes that affect these abilities, the first one being the Kung Fu costume. His spin attack is replaced with a karate chop, and his slide attack is replaced with a quote-unquote mega strike. It's without a doubt my least favorite costume. It's not that the abilities themselves are bad, it's the fact that this costume is primarily used for wave enemy encounters, and those aren't good. You don't have a great selection of attacks, and spamming the same action over and over again is repetitive and not fun. It's kind of funny though. Sometimes, mid-combo, you'll go into slow motion to perform a really sweet looking attack but the attack animation is very rarely in sync with the enemy actually taking the damage, and as a result, it looks really, really stupid. <laughs> Next up is the Bat costume. He keeps his standard spin attack and gains the ability to glide, which, when used properly, is awesome. The third and final costume is the Robin Hood costume, which is my favorite. He, yet again, keeps his standard spin attack, and this time has the ability to shoot plungers with his bow. They do a fair amount of damage, and work way better than the Mega Strike for long-range combat. They're also used to snipe targets that trigger different events, which is used pretty well. It's disappointing this costume becomes available so late in the game, because there are very few instances it's utilized, and it's even more disappointing that the Kung Fu costume is used in almost every area due to its early introduction. The bat costume is used just the right amount, though. Moving on, the main game involves Scooby and the gang going to and exploring several areas searching for clues, this game's main collectible. Each of these areas acts as a hub world and has multiple levels within, and after completing those levels, you use your discovered clues to put the pieces together and figure out who's behind the crimes, which leads to a boss fight against the culprit. Along the way, there are some other things to collect. Scooby Snacks, which form a trail that shows you where to go next, and if you collect a hundred, they give you back a medal, this game's health indicator. I love the fact that they're used for guidance. The worlds aren't always linear, and at some points I'm certain it would have been near impossible to find out where to go. So, this is a simple and effective solution. Next, Mubber, which is awarded to the player for defeating enemies and is used to power up costume machines. At some points, you will approach an obstacle only passable using a specific costume's ability, and the machine used to equip that costume requires a lot of mubber, so you'll be forced to backtrack and look for enemies to grind, which I'm not a fan of. Next, recipe ingredients, which are scattered around all levels, and if they're brought back to Shaggy's Porter Kitchen, he will cook up food that will increase Scooby's metal count by one. And when I say food, I mean whatever this is supposed to be. No matter what ingredients you put in, you get this bowl of, I don't know, Lastly, trap pieces, which unlock monster profiles. Cool, I guess? Anyways, there are five areas in the game. The first one is Monstrous Fright and Magic, which serves as this game's tutorial level, so it's nothing special. There's no boss and no levels within. It's just there to give you a feel for all Scooby's moves and allow you to play around with them in a safe environment. The following area is Shutterly Showdown in Chinatown, which is pretty okay. Its first level has a lot of platforming and is great. After you complete it, you unlock the Kung Fu costume, and the next level utilizes it. This level isn't bad, there is a lot of combat, and that's not fun, but the rest of it's decent to make up for it. At the end, there's a random water skiing section, which was fun, and the only time this form of gameplay was implemented, so I didn't mind it. The final level has a nice atmosphere, and that's all I'm gonna say about it. Afterwards, you take on the first boss, Zentuo's Dragon, which is pretty awful. 
All aforementioned problems with the Kung Fu costume apply here, except this time you use it against a boss. You can charge and fire your Mega Strike at him, or just wait for him to get close and karate chop him. All the while you avoid his non-existent variety of attacks. What I'm getting at is it's a really bland boss fight that could have been handled way better. The next area is Rockin' Roller Coaster Terror, which I really liked. Its first level is okay, it's relatively short and there's some good platforming. After you beat it, you unlock the bat costume and the following level uses it, but not to its full potential. Regardless, it's still a really fun level, the kung fu costume is used minimally and at the very end there's a slide section, the only one in the game. It's pretty hard to control and there are no checkpoints, but its design is decent and there are some cool visuals, making for a decent experience. It's nowhere near as good as the slides of something like Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom, but it's only used in this one place, and because of that, I appreciate it a little more. The next level is heavily focused on the bat costume, and it's utilized excellently. The platforming is really fun, and because of the implementation of the ability to glide, there are some really unique ideas here, and I love it. After this, you take on the following boss, the Guitar Ghoul, which is somehow worse than the previous boss. I went in expecting it to utilize the bat costume, you know, like the last boss utilized the kung fu costume, but nope, just normal scooby-doo. You attack spiders to launch them at the mirrors, which will shatter them and leave an opening for you to hit him. He has a few attacks, but there are so many health things scattered around that I never needed to worry about avoiding them. It's really bad. The next area is Harem Scarum at the Museum, which is my favorite area in the game. The first level takes place in the dinosaur exhibit, and it's a really cool level. It's only flaw being the flying section at the end. The camera's head-on, and you have to avoid some enemy attacks and upcoming obstacles. It isn't very enjoyable, but it didn't last very long. After you complete it, you unlock the Robin Hood costume, and, shocker, it's used in the next level. But this next level sucks. The beginning shows you what the Robin Hood costume can do, and that's about it. The rest of the level is just normal Scooby-Doo. There is some good platforming, but again, the most utilized costume here is the Kung Fu costume, when it should be the Robin Hood costume, because it was just introduced. The overuse of a mundane gameplay style when there are alternatives that are clearly superior is absurd. They had the really good Bat and Robin Hood costumes to work with, but they instead chose to overuse the inferior Kung Fu costume in almost every level, which just doesn't make any sense. <sighs> The next level takes place in the Undersea Exhibit, and this one actually utilizes the Robin Hood costume well, which is fantastic. There's some pretty sweet ways to use it, and that combined with a nice environment makes for a cool stage. Then at the end, for some unknown reason, you hop onto a plane and complete a flying section that plays completely different than the previous one. This time, you're in a plane and have a weapon you can shoot to pop the blimps in the way, and the camera shows you what's in front of you rather than what's behind you. This section feels COMPLETELY out of place. Before, it kind of felt like it belonged. You were making your way through a level with the bat costume and spotted the pterodactyl that kidnapped Shaggy, so you had to chase it down to save him. Okay. Then here, you're just making your way through a level, then BOOM, there's a plane just chilling in the middle of nowhere and you hop onto it to complete this flying section. It controls okay, and this is the only time it's used, so I don't have a problem with it in that regard. But the fact that this section just happens out of the blue and has no reason for existence kind of bothers me. But whatever. After this, you take on the Caveman, which is actually the best boss in the game. Not that that says too much, but still, it was enjoyable and by far the most unique. You and the Caveman are in UFOs and are both trying to bump each other into the electricity that borders the arena. There were also a couple power-ups scattered around to spice things up. When I first played it, the first thing that came to mind was that minigame from Mario Party 9 where you tilt the Wii Remote and try to push Bowser Jr. into the electric. And yeah, it's pretty much the same thing, but this is the original. That minigame is a lot of fun, and this is essentially an expanded version of it without motion controls, so I'm a fan of it. When you beat him, you enter, <clears throat> re-enter the final area, back to Monsters Fright and Magic. There's a couple minutes of basic platforming that leads to the final boss against the pterodactyl that can be summed up in two words. Intense mediocrity. The concept is there, there's three phases that each use one of the costumes, but it does not deliver. The Robin Hood costume is used to shoot a target that occasionally appears in his mouth. The bat costume is used for a flying section, which I won't hate on too much, it was the best one yet. And the kung fu costume. Well, f the kung fu costume. It is actually one of the worst final boss fights in any video game. 
Like, why is the last enemy in the game, the final boss, just an oversized regular enemy that has nothing to do with the story whatsoever? <sighs> Anyways, that's it. You beat him up and clear Dread's name, the end. After you beat the game, you can revisit any level of your choosing and collect everything you missed. But I have no desire to play any more of this game. There is a bonus art gallery to check out, which is always a nice touch. Besides that, I usually like to comment on the music, but none of it really stands out to me. The remade version of the Scooby-Doo theme at the beginning was nice, but the music that plays throughout the journey is nothing special, and I never see myself listening to it again. Looking at the game as a whole, it's mediocre. There are some huge things wrong with it that should not and cannot be overlooked, but when you consider everything else the game has to offer, they sort of cancel each other out. You have bad gameplay elements and good gameplay elements, awful bosses and decent level design, a dull soundtrack and great visuals. It's a Scooby-Doo based video game, and it does a decent job of bringing that world and those characters into a functional game. And... yeah. Hey, you uh, made it to the end. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like, and if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. Before I end this, I want to update you guys on a couple things. First and foremost, this video, the one you just watched, is the first to utilize my new format. My previous video resembled it, but this is the first one to actually be crafted around it, and I just want to know what you thought of it. What did I do right, and what could I change to make it better? I'm still in the process of establishing this foundation, and would greatly appreciate hearing anything and everything you have to say about it. Thank you. Also, real quick, if you want to stay up to date with what's going on with me, I have a Twitter and post updates there, so yeah. Anyways, happy Halloween, thank you very much for watching, and have a fantastic day.